This is 18% gray. 18% gray. And this is about the way that your camera averages out all of the light that it sees to make an image. So if you take your eye and you were to make everything that your eye sees around you black and white, and then you were to take all the tones that you would see, so instead of these colors, you would see just tones of gray. If you were to take them all and throw them into a sort of a washing machine or into a blender or something like that and let them all mix together, uh, they would kind of wash out to about an 18% gray on a sunny day. So that's an important thing. If you're kind of outside and it's a sunny, average, well-lit day, or you're maybe inside um, on a well-lit day, it's going to average out to about 18% gray for most scenes. Now, not everywhere and not all over the place. You'll see why that isn't true in a second. But that's just an important thing to know. That's why your ca what your camera is trying to accomplish. And it's the reason that a lot of your images might come out wrong um, or come out underexposed or overexposed when you're doing photography. How about we then talk a little bit about how this all happens and how the camera evaluates this 18% gray. We're going to make a couple little metering systems here. So imagine we're looking through some cameras. So we've got one camera here. We're going to make four cameras. One camera here, and they're getting progressively bigger. <laughs> they're also getting progressively more complicated as we go to the right here in a second. You'll see what I mean by that. All right, so here we've got our four frames, and we're going to start out with our average. And this is kind of um, not one that you see very often, but your average meter is just going to take everything that it sees in the entire frame. So you're looking through and you're seeing, you know, maybe a mountain or something like that with, some, with a little creek or something. And it's going to just take all the light that it sees and look at it just the way that we did on that first slide, where it's going to try to find, make everything, even all of the colors, out to gray. Uh, and that's called an average meter. Now, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to have a spot meter. So a spot meter is just a little tiny spot, often in the center. And a spot meter is going to just measure the light falling on that little point in the image. So you have to know where your spot is. Often it's going to be marked on your camera. Um, modern cameras, you can move the spot all over the place. Older cameras, it's usually just right in the middle. And that spot meter is going to try to find 18% gray in that little point in the camera. And then what you'll do is you'll point that spot in your viewfinder towards something that is about 18% gray. So if you're somewhere where you have maybe a sidewalk that's about the perfect gray, you can point it towards the sidewalk. You can t check your readings, check what your, your shutter speed and your ISO and how everything is working out. Set your shutter speed and then turn back to your scene and take your photograph. Uh, so that's how spot meters sort of traditionally work. These days you can use them a lot more accurately and specifically. Your next uh, kind of this metering system is called center weighted and so you'll have sort of like a big spot here and then sometimes it'll even have like a slightly bigger one around the outside of that and this is called like I said center weighted there's a little uh, dash in between there and center weighted basically means that there's going to be kind of a spot in the middle, so it's going to be a little bit bigger often, but you'll have sort of a spot in the middle, and then a bigger spot that's also pretty light sensitive around the outside, and then maybe a tiny bit out here. So it might take like 50% of its information from here, it might take um, maybe 40% from here, and it might take 10% of its information from here, for example. Um, so things like that will happen. Um, but center weighted work differently for different cameras, different models. Every center weighted meter works a little differently. Um, I have to say center weighted is my favorite way to meter things because I just kind of feel like I understand that weighting, um, that metering system a little better. It's also the one I've always used since I was first doing photography. Um, but the other ones are great too. I also use a lot of spot photography and I never use my averaging meter. <laughs> so just even though it can be really great, I've never really used it. Um, now the last one is sort of, um, well, there's lots of different names for it out there. I'm just going to call it the multi-zone because that's the non- corporate way of saying it. The thing is is that every company has its own way of creating 
multiple metering systems that um, these sort of advanced metering systems that are coming out today that are something they're often a combination of a center weighted and an average so you'll have a center in the middle that's maybe you know accounts for like 60 percent and then you'll have like these different zones over here you'll have a zone and over here you'll have a zone and you'll have another one here and you'll have another one here and I would recommend for beginners, this is also a really great metering system. Most of the new ones are really good. Um, they do a great job. They, a lot of them are even comparing uh, your image, the one that it, you're looking through the, through the viewfinder at, to thousands of images that are on like a little computer chip on the camera. So you'll actually get often a very good um, metering from a multi-zone. And sometimes you'll cure it called an evaluative or a segment maybe a honeycomb or a matrix meter. So you'll hear lots of different names for this and just remember that that's, they're all just multi-zone sort of fancy modern age uh, light meters. They're the kind that have really come out in the last 10 to 20 years. Um, all of these other ones are older and sort of more tried and true. In my opinion, I like them, um, but I also use my multi-zone meter for complicated metering all the time. Now, how do you actually read this? This is actually the probably the more complicated part of it or more the more practical part of it. You, really important to understand how your light meter is reading the scene. Want to, you want to know what your light meter is seeing, but you also want to know how to read it. Now on the sides of older cameras a lot of times you'd have just a little plus and a minus and then you would have a little kind of like a like a needle that would stick sort of into the side of your picture or maybe you'd have like a little LED or something like that and in the middle there was a spot where it was perfect and then when it went too far towards the plus side you were overexposing and too far down towards the negative side it was underexposing. You also had the phenomena for a very long time of numbers just being written on the side so you'd have like 500, 250, 125 and then you'd have another you know again same thing needle coming in saying up oh, 250 is your right shutter speed for this f-stop and you would set your f-stop manually and then it would tell you what shutter speed was correct. Um, this was really common with aperture and shutter priority cameras um, for a long time. The modern version of this is actually a lot nicer to use I have to say. I have a couple cameras that have this and you'll have one that has kind of a zero in the middle and kind of a line and then there will be kind of a line like this and it, it looks different on every camera that's out there. But then you're also going to have a one, a two, and maybe even a third hash here. So one, two, and maybe three. And then one, two, and maybe three. So Sorry, my graph looks a little bit inaccurate here. Between each of those steps, you're probably going to have two steps in between each one as well. And uh, those are what are called third steps. Now if you guys remember how we are talking about shutter speeds and f-stops and ISO speeds. This is one stop. So that's one stop. This is also one stop going this way. And the same going here and the same going here. So you can just call it one stop one, two, and three, stop one, two, and three. And maybe this is going in the underexposed direction and this is going in the overexposed direction. So the plus will be overexposed, the minus will be underexposed, just like in these old cameras back in the day. The great thing about this is that you're going to have a little blue needle again, but this time it's probably going to be like a light or some sort of some little notch on your screen or something like that. And this will slide this way and that way according to how your camera is doing on as it, its exposure at that moment. So if your, expo if your little blue line is over here, you're, that means you're going to be overexposing by two stops. So that means that your your photograph is going to be way too light. So I'm going to write too light over here. And this will be too dark. And so, like I said, the same thing applies if you're over here. You're two stops underexposed, which means you would need to change your f-stop by two full stops to get to your correct exposure. Now sometimes you want to underexpose. Sometimes you're looking at a scene and say your spot meter is on a spot that is maybe one stop darker than 18% gray. So you look at it and you're like, eh, it's not quite 18% gray, that's maybe like 30% gray. Then maybe it's about one stop or maybe almost two stops um, to 
too, um, too dark. And so you're, gonna, you're going to know that that's not 18% gray and expose for that correctly. But generally you're just going to, most of you are going to be using um, multi-zone um, uh, multi um, metering and you're going to then just let it do its thing and maybe once in a while jump in and sort of do a little bit of adjusting. If you're, you're looking at a dark scene, if you're looking at a black photograph and it's telling you um, that it wants, you know, something over here, then you're going to know eh, a little bit more over here maybe, or the other way actually, it'd probably be more like that. So um, you just want to always keep in mind how this system is working. First of all, to know what your meter is reading and what it's seeing, because that's really important. If you have a really bright light source here that you want to expose for, but your spot meter is there, it's not going to it's not going to work right so you're going to you're going to overexpose maybe for uh for your light source because you're looking at a darker spot in the photograph or the other way around um maybe you want to expose for something that's over here but there's a big bright light right behind your spot meter the same with your center weighted meter um and you just want to keep all of that in mind for when you're looking at all these charts Light meters are really made to work with these kinds of scenes. This is exactly what I was explaining in the in the beginning. If you were to take this cam uh, take this photograph, throw it in a make it black and white and throw it in a blender, you'd probably come out with about 18% gray. That's probably almost the average of all of this. So, these are the kind of scenes that light meters really excel at. Scenes like this, however, are not very good because the, the thing is, is here, if you were to average all of this light out, if you were to average out the area where my, I think I was using a center weighted meter that was right here. Um, actually, it was more like a spot meter, really. And the thing is, is that the light inside of that circle there is not 18% gray. That is probably not even close. It's probably something like, maybe it's like 7% or something like that. I mean, it's very light. It might even be like 4%. Who knows? So generally when you are shooting in snow, you have to overexpose on purpose. When you because you, you know that you're shooting something that is white. It's not it's not gray, it's white, so you need to let the shutter be open a little longer, or let a little bit more light into your camera. And so you're going to overexpose by one and a half, sometimes two stops somewhere in there, sometimes a little bit less, but generally one and a half to two stops is kind of a good start depending on the conditions. Here's a situation where the camera probably wanted me to overexpose. It was actually kind of doing the opposite of um, what was happening in the other image uh, because it would see all of this black. My camera would look at all this and be like, oh, that I want to make that light. I want to make it look like this here. You know, the camera's trying to make everything look sort of like this and this here and this here and like all this stuff. You know, so it's trying to match this black to make it light. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted to, I put my spot meter right here on my friend Julia's cheek and said, okay, that's about 18% gray right there, which it is. Its skin color is a little bit off, but about 18% gray on um, Caucasians. And uh, you can see here that the photograph ended up coming out about correctly. So, um, but if you were to just look at this whole scene and do an average metering, you would have to you would have to underexpose the image um, according to uh, the meter reading. Here is another another example of a really hard scene to meter. Uh, what's so hard about this is that it is backlit. Backlighting is really hard to. Um, it's really hard to photograph, especially because you get really strong light sources like this and they will really mess with your situation. Here too you can see there's light shining off of this guitar. It kept reflecting into my lens and it kept messing with my light meter. I'd watch my light meter go blue and jump to the right or left um, whenever the guitar was moving. How do you meter a situation like this? Well, you often have to unfortunately guess a little bit. Um, I often just spot, me, spot meter off of whatever I can find, and I spot metered off of um, the Sam's shirt here because his his pullover, his his um, his coat here was too dark. It's about me negative two, so I could maybe um, do it there. I could maybe, um, if I know about where it's at, I can find something that's a reference point that I under that I know is about 18% gray. But another problem with the situation was that the light kept changing, so I just used my spot meter. Um, tried to keep in mind how the uh, exposure was changing and made it work.
So that is a little bit of an introduction to metering. I hope that that gives you a good idea of uh, what things you can do with your meter and how it works. Um, there is a lot to it, and really the only way to learn is to go out and practice. So do that, and then come on back to allversity.org for more lessons.